Welcome to my channel. Welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be a series I recently started on my channel where I kind of just rank all the products that I've been trying for the past month, two months. It just depends on how many products I accumulate. Today I have 17 products to go over with everyone. So just talking a little bit more about them in depth. Has my opinion changed on them since I tried them because all of these were just first impressions. So without any further ado, if you like ranking videos, those are one of my favorites, then give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and stick around. I do upload videos twice a week on Sundays and Thursdays. And with that, let's just get started talking about all these products. Let's start in with number 17. This one is gonna go to the Chanel Le Beige Touche de Ton Water Fresh Complexion Touch Foundation. So this one was the reformulated of the Water Fresh Tint, and I got the shade B30. So first things first, I mean, this was just a complete fail. I hated it even more than the first one, which is tough to do. I really did not like that one. It just looks gross. It doesn't blend as well as the first one, like the little pigments in here, you can see like it's kind of just like goopy. They tried to almost give it more coverage and it really just missed the mark. They kind of just grossed everyone out with these little pigments in here, which the original does have that, but it's not so just, I think, suspended in gel. So it doesn't look so just kind of Petri dish. I don't know what it is about this. It's separated on the skin. It didn't last well. The coverage wasn't there for me. I didn't mind the original. I know a lot of people didn't like it. The only thing I didn't enjoy about that foundation was the wear time. It didn't last long for me. This one lasted a little bit longer, but it just looked terrible on the skin. And for reference, I have normal leaning dry skin. I have pretty average normal skin. It's not too oily. It's not too dry. And most foundations should work for me. So I will insert in a swatch of all of these. But another thing about this is, as I mentioned, I got the shade B30 and the shade was not comparable to other Chanel B30 shades. So that was also just a huge con for me. I don't want to rag on this too much. Again, you can see just the photo I have of other Chanel foundations in the same shade, but this was just a really big miss for me. And it made me sad because the Le Beige Healthy Skin Glow Foundation, their original, is my holy grail. It's my number one favorite foundation of all time. I love Chanel as a brand. I love trying out their foundations. And to just have this one be a flop was really just disappointing to me. I will also, on top of linking any swatch photos that I have. I will also be linking any videos that I have above in reference if you wanna go back and watch the videos on any of these products, but this was just a complete and utter fail. Number 16 is going to go to another foundation. This is the Dior Prestige Le Cushion Tint de Rose. So it is a cushion foundation, their Prestige foundation, and it looks like this. It's very nice. The only thing about this, again, just like a complete fail, I have no idea what's going on with this foundation. I think that they're discontinuing it and it just, I can see why. It's not good. And this again was just a complete fail of a foundation. The only thing that saved this over the Chanel that bumped it up just a little bit is the cushion fact and that it wore a little bit longer. But this has like four shades and I think that I got the third shade up, I have the shade 20, but their shade range, terrible compared to just their other foundation. Dior usually isn't great with their shade range, but this was just the worst of the worst. And I just, I can't see anything good about it. From what I can understand, the Dior Prestige line is kind of just their step up and their more luxury makeup line compared to like their Dior Backstage line or just like the Dior Forever Foundation. So their 
liquid form of the Dior Prestige Foundation is over $100. And I got this one because it was a little bit less expensive than that. But I don't know, I might for science sake pick up the liquid one because I like to torture myself. But this didn't stand out to me. It didn't wear well. It just wasn't for the price of foundation I would reach for. There's way more foundations that are just better than this. And you know, for a cushion, I love cushion foundations. And this is like the first cushion foundation I just didn't like. So that is why I'm putting this at number 16. Number 15 is another Chanel product. This is the Le Beige Water Fresh Blush. So I have the shade Warm Pink. And here you can see just how the original looked. This is in the original packaging for the Water Fresh Tint Foundation. It just looks less gross and maybe because it has like the plastic around it, it doesn't look so much like this one. But this also, I think I like put like five layers of this on my cheeks to even get anything. And some people like that look. I'm not gonna, you know, say that it isn't for everyone. But for me, I don't like a lot of blush. I'm not on the complete blush train that's really popular right now, but even this you could barely see on my skin. So this is just ranked a little bit lower, more on my preference. I believe that they launched this in Asia before that it was launched in the US. So that makes a lot more sense. I could see this being a lot more popular in Asia, but for my preferences and what I like, I just wish this was a little bit more pigmented and then I would have liked this a lot better, but that is why it's coming in at number 15. Number 14 is actually a bronzer. So this is the Guerlain Blooming Bee and this is their Sunkissed Healthy Glow Powder. They call it a face powder. It's actually a bronzer. So it has like this bee design. It did have gold on it, but the gold's clearly faded off. And this wasn't a bad bronzer, but they don't really advertise it that great. So this bronzer is the same, I think, as their normal bronzer that they always carry in shade three. Here is a swatch of it. However, they added like the little pink in here. And as I mentioned, it had gold to kind of be like a universal glowy bronzer, but the gold wears off so fast, you can't even see it. And then to have just like a normal bronzer shade and make it this limited edition collection is confusing to me. It pulled very orange on my skin and normally any bronzer that kind of has like this pink running through it, I have a Dior one that's like that. There's the Too Faced one that I really enjoy. I usually enjoy bronzers that kind of have like this more rosy, but it didn't pull rosy, it just pulled orange. And I was just left confused by this bronzer. I don't, I don't have anything really great to say about it. It's not bad, just I could see myself decluttering this in the future and just not grabbing for it. It's nothing that blew me away that I, that I love. And that's unfortunate because I really like Guerlain as a brand, but this just, this is not the greatest thing from them. Number 13, this is the Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. So everyone was really excited when this came out because it had that ambient feel to it. Here is a swatch of it here. And I will also just throw up my swatch photo that I have comparing it to other shades. I have the shade five. And first things first, the swatch photos on their website do not reflect the actual swatches that it comes in, it's so much lighter than it is. The shade still worked out for me. However, it's just important to know that Hourglass completely botched their swatch photos. They did not do a good job at showcasing the shades on there. I'm glad I went with the shade five. I think I was considering going with four and that just would have been way, way too light for me. But this is just, you know, we're kind of in that medium category. It's not bad, but it's, it's not for me. This is a little bit more coverage than I would like in a foundation. I didn't really see that soft glow that everyone was talking about, that ambient finish. And I just, I wanted more from this. I would have liked it if the coverage was just turned down a little bit 
and it was just a little bit more luminous and wore better, but this didn't stand out compared to other foundations that I've reviewed recently. Nothing really, like I don't even remember how I feel about it. That's how unremarkable this foundation is. On to number 12. This one hurts my heart a little bit, but this is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. Looks like this. It's talked about a lot. It's raved about a lot. I have the shade 2N. You're not really going to see it on the back of my hand here. 2N is normally the shade that I wear in all Dior products. It's a pretty perfect shade match for me, but this powder and I just don't know what to say about this powder. I want it to work so bad for me, but I just think similar to some of these other products, it's just not a product for me. I tend to prefer a translucent powder because I don't want to add more coverage and this just isn't translucent. It's going to add coverage. So this is really only a powder that I would wear if I was wearing a skin tint and wanted to just bump up the coverage just a little bit. It does work for that. It's great for that. I like it for that. I didn't like it in my video because I didn't like the foundation that I paired it with. I just didn't like that combination. However, when I put this powder up against a lighter coverage foundation, to just build the coverage just a little bit and then set the foundation. This works great for that, but it's kind of just falling in the middle because it's not a staple that I could see myself using over and over and going through 10 of them like Samantha March. It's just okay. And you know, A plus on packaging. I really like how sleek this is. It's very thin, but this just isn't something I'm gonna reach for every day. And that's why it's ranked a little bit lower. It's not bad, it's just, it's just okay. Coming in at number 11, we have another Dior product. This is the Dior Forever Natural Nude Foundation. So here is a swatch of it. Again, I wear the shade 2N in basically all Dior products, but this was good. I liked it better than the powder, clearly. That's why it's coming in at number 11. This confuses me a little bit because I see it at the Sephora in France here. That's currently where I live. However, it doesn't really seem talked about in the U.S. They definitely have it in the U.S., but I just, I don't see it anywhere. I'm not really sure what Dior is doing with their foundations. I know that they've reformulated a few of them, but this is a good foundation. I think that I prefer out of all of them, the Dior Forever glow the skin glow glow forever i don't the glow one and compared to that this one is just a little bit too matte it said natural nude and that's immediately what pulled me in i was like okay the glow one's just a little bit glowy this is going to bump that down it's going to be a little bit more sheer it's going to be perfect for me but it fell it was just a little bit flat on my skin that's the only con. As it wore throughout the day, it was better and better. And that's why I have it ranked at number 11. But in the beginning, this just didn't hit the mark for me. It's okay. It's not a foundation. You'll see some others coming up here that I'm just obsessed with that I want to wear over and over. It's not one that I think about and like, oh, I'm going to wear this Dior one today. It's not one of those, but I'm happy when I wear it. I like wearing it. It's just not an everyday one for me. Number 10 is this guy. This is the Dior Backstage Flash Perfector Concealer. So I was so excited when this came out. Here is a swatch of the shade 2N. I wanted to keep a shade close to my skin tone. I didn't want to go too much lighter. It does have this cool, almost, it's like a brush applicator, almost looks like a lip brush. I do really like that with this. This is a good everyday concealer. You're seeing a lot of Dior products because I did a full face of Dior. That's why there's majority Dior products in here. But this was one of the ones that just impressed me the most. It didn't crease too much. I didn't necessarily like it with this foundation, which I tried at the same time. However, with a light coverage foundation, this is great. I don't find the coverage to be to full coverage. I would prefer it if this had a little bit more coverage to just cover up my dark circles, but it's like a, a light to medium coverage and 
it does what it's supposed to do. It'll cover a little bit, but not all the way. And that's why I prefer it with a skin tint because it just blends a little bit better. If you're wearing a skin tint with a full coverage foundation, it's gonna look a little bit off. So this is just a concealer for those days that you're having a little bit lighter makeup and it performs well. I wouldn't say, you know, for the Dior name that it performs any better than a drugstore concealer, but if you like luxury makeup, you want to splurge a little bit, this concealer is solid. Number nine is going to this. This is the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow Blush in the shade 001 Pink. And I wish this was rated higher, but it's not. I don't mind this blush. I even wore it yesterday. I was, I went out on like a little trip out of town, but I don't know what the hype is about this. This is not a new blush. And for some reason, it completely blew up on TikTok. It completely blew up on Instagram. It's been sold out for months. It comes back in stock and then it's sold out again. I've had this for quite a long time. I don't know why it's just all of a sudden taking the internet by storm. Here's a swatch of it. But seeing reviews of this is what made me decide to pull it out and finally try it. I have like bins of makeup that I've never tried before, specifically so I can try them on my channel. And, you know, I, I pulled this one out and I was expecting really great things from it. Like, why would it be all over TikTok if it wasn't good, right? But I don't know. I don't think my skin just liked this. I've heard this is a really long lasting blush. It was not long lasting on my skin. It faded almost immediately. If you watch the video where I apply this, it's so pink on my cheeks. I was, I was freaked out. Like it was the most pink cheeks blush disaster I've ever had that I can remember. But then, you know, 15 minutes later, you can barely see it on my skin. So that's why it's just coming in a little bit lower for its lasting power because I expected more of this. It is nice once I kind of got the feel of it, how to apply it, but it is not long lasting for me. It does not last same as any other blush out there. So that's why it's a little bit lower, but I do like this. I'll use it. I think it's really pretty. I think I would have preferred to have gotten the coral shade though. Number eight is the beloved cookie highlighter from Benefit. I know, I know I'm like very late to the game, like years, years late for never trying this highlighter, but I just, I never tried it. I was living on an island. I didn't pick up any makeup. So that's why I've just tried it recently. Here's a swatch of it if you haven't seen it. If you haven't tried this highlighter, please let me know in the comments. So I know that I'm not the only one who kind of just never jumped on this train, but we're kind of in the category now where I like the products, they're good, I'll reach for them but they're not as good as clearly the top products. This is a really nice highlight. I think maybe I'm trying it a little bit late. We're kind of past the really blinding highlight phase. We're kind of more into subtle highlight and more blush, but I still really appreciate a really great highlight. And this is really, really pretty, but there's just other things that I've tried that I like a little bit better. However, I can see myself still reaching for this and using it. I wish that I had the slimmer packaging that Benefit's now coming out with, or I wish that I had gotten this more in a palette so it wasn't so bulky. That's just a common complaint with Benefit products, but I'm glad I finally got to try this, see what all the hype is about, and I'm putting it at number eight. Number seven is going to go to this Dior Quint. So this is the 739 House of Dreams. This came in the Altarier of Dreams collection during holiday. I know I'm French and I still said that wrong. My accent is American. Here's what it looks like. And then here are swatches of it with that bottom silver shade. It's a very nice, cool toned palette. Dior shadows never steer me wrong. Is it like some colorful, crazy, palette that you're going to get and just be able to do amazing looks with. No, you know, it has this pop of silver and that's, that's as good as you're going to get from Dior in my opinion. I know they have some other colorful palettes, but they really just shine in their everyday palettes that you can really depend on and use over and over again. I really think that that's their strong suit when it comes to shadows and it's not going to be for everyone. 
Do I think you can get like a better palette with better quality somewhere else? Yes. But again, if you just love luxury makeup and like to collect it, this was a really great palette. I love, I don't know if you can still see because I've used it quite a bit, but it had kind of like the Dior storefront imprinted on it. It just is really lovely. I love these like just cooler pinky tones. They're my favorite. I have nothing bad to say about this palette. I liked every single look that I made with this. There's not too many looks you can make, but I just, this is something special to my heart. I really liked it comparatively to all these other Dior products that I tried. And then just a side note, if you order on the Dior website, you can usually get engraving on there. So I highly recommend if you're gonna order to do that. I think it's like a cute little touch to do that. You can't do it on all their products, but on some of them you can. And I love that little touch. It just makes it even more special. And that's why I put it in at number seven. Number six is gonna go to this Charlotte Tilbury Instant Look in a Palette. I have the shade Gorgeous Glowing Beauty. So this came out during holiday. It's one of her holiday palettes. And here it is. So you have three eye shades, a highlight. No, these are two cheek shades, a highlight, and then a bronzer. I will throw up the swatch pick that I have of this but I love this palette. I wish that I had collected some of her other ones, but I just never got them. They're usually limited edition when she releases them, but this is just the perfect kind of palette for my lifestyle, and that's why it's just ranked so much higher. If I was to go somewhere again where I could only bring a suitcase, this is the palette that I would bring because I could come up with just an everyday eye look. I have a bronzer. I have a blush. I have a highlight. I have everything that I could want for an everyday look in this palette. And it's just, it's so compact. It's so tiny. I love these. I think that they're great, especially if you're just someone who travels a lot. The only thing I didn't love about this was the bronzer. I didn't like the tone as much as other bronzers that I have in my collection, but it's fine. It's not terrible. It just wasn't my favorite favorite, but that's why I have this at number six instead of a little bit higher. Okay, we're in top five. All these products I highly recommend, but number five is gonna go to the last Dior product. This is the Dior Forever Natural Bronze. I have the shade 03 Soft Bronze. Can't really see the swatch on my hand there. It's very, very light for being shade three. I am glad I got shade three. I think I was debating between two and three, and had I gotten two, it just would have been way too light, but Dior bronzers are excellent. I have the Dior Mineral Bronzer, I think. It has kind of like pink in it, and I love that bronzer so much. I'm really glad that I picked this one up as well. I think the packaging is really cute. Dior is really just up to their game in their packaging because the one that I have before is a little bit older. It's, it's a lot older, but I love how it's just kind of cushiony. It kind of looks like a bag and the product is great. This is a great, great everyday bronzer. The only con is just the shade. I think for being shade three and being my skin tone, this should have been a little bit darker, but I don't work for Dior. I don't know how they come up with the depths of their products. So there's nothing I can do about that. Just beware if you're thinking of picking up this bronzer, definitely go a shade deeper because it runs pretty light. Coming in at number four, and this is where the ranking got a little bit tough for me, but this is the Givenchy Prism Libre Blush in the shade four Organza Sienna. Kind of see a swatch there, it's a little bit tough but it's definitely more of one of their darker warm tone blushes. Here is the four here. I was surprised at how much I loved this blush. I really, really liked it a lot. I want to say this is the first Givenchy product that I've tried. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that this is the first one and it really, really impressed me. Wasn't expecting to like this as much as I did, mainly because it's a loose powder, and loose powder is kind of a pain in the ass, especially when it comes to highlight, blush, bronzer, any of that stuff. It's just so much more convenient to have it in pressed form. That's why I've been waiting and waiting. Givenchy is supposed to come out with their face 
powders, you know, that have the four things just like this, where it has like the four squares. They're supposed to come out with their loose powder in pressed form. And I've been waiting for that to come out because I would much rather it in pressed form. However, I haven't seen it yet. If anyone knows when it's supposed to release, please let me know because I do plan on picking that up. Just, I don't know what I can say about this. It was the perfect tone. They have different shades if this is not what you're into but it's great for summer. It gives like that very sunburnt look to your cheeks, but I can also see this being really great in fall and winter as well. Just, it's a great all around blush. I don't know what else to say. My favorite part about this is that it has this like little puff in here that just stops the product. It's really just, that sealed the deal for me. And I know that sounds really silly, but I hate it when products get really messy and this just stops that. And the, the puff is just so cute. The, like, for example, I have the Cody Airspun powder. And that, like, I have all these little cotton rounds stuffed in it to stop it from spilling everywhere. Because there's nothing I hate more than just powder flying everywhere. I, I really don't like that. I cannot stress enough how much I appreciate this little puff in here. Stopping it from just getting really messy. And then you can just take the puff out, pour it in the lid. It's just really cute. I I probably will pick up other shades. That's how much I liked this. I mean, that's why I ranked it number four. But this is just a product that I woke up in the morning getting ready to put my makeup on. And I looked forward to putting this on. There's not that many products where I think about it like, I know what blush I want to wear. I usually open up my drawer and I'm like, uh, okay, I'll wear this one today. But I knew that I would want to wear this and I just, I kept wanting to pull for it. And that's why it's at number four. Number three. So this one is going to go to the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. I have the shade four here. I will also pop up my swatch photo and then you can watch my review of it up above. But this concealer is, it's great. It's everything that I hoped that it would be. It's lightweight. It covers really well. I feel like the coverage for me could just be a little bit, a little bit more. I just, I really like that full coverage concealer. I can't emphasize enough my dark circles. I do not get a lot of sleep. I get woken up a lot. It's just, it is what it is. And I need any extra help covering that that I can get. But other than that, everyday concealer, this goes great with light foundations. It goes great with medium coverage foundations, full coverage foundations. This just works well with every foundation that I've tried. It's just a great all around, well-rounded concealer. And that's why I have it ranked so high. With this Dior one, I have to remember, okay, wear it more with a lighter coverage foundation. This one, I just know I can reach for it. It's gonna work, it's gonna be great, it's not gonna crease, you can set it. I love everything about this. The only, the only little star, the only little caveat is I wear the shade four in all of Charlotte Tilbury's foundations. Shade four is a pretty, pretty good shade match for me. I can usually rely on that foundation to work. I got the shade four in the concealer and it is so much lighter than the foundations. I don't like it when companies do that. I talked about it in my video before. I know that they probably do that. So if you're the shade four on the foundation, get the shade four on the concealer and it'll work for you. I would just rather know that shade four matches shade four on the foundation and I can go down as much as I want because maybe I don't want it to be as highlighted as Charlotte Tilbury wants it to be for me. So that's the only con about that. You really have to look at the shades. I almost even went, I remember looking at the pictures and I remember looking at shade 4.5 and being like, this kind of looks like it's gonna be a better shade for me. But I was like, no, that doesn't make sense. If I wear the shade four in the foundation, why would I go up in the concealer? And that's why I ultimately ended up with a shade four. But I do wish that I went up a little bit because it's a little bit too stark of a highlight for me. And that's the only thing. I might pick this up in a darker shade. So I just kind of have one that I can maybe mix with and have less of a highlight. But other than that, A plus concealer, Charlotte Tilbury really stepped it up with this concealer. I never tried the Magic Away concealer, but I don't think it was as big of a hit. 
This is just really good. It's being talked about right now for great reason. Highly recommend picking this up. I also think that the price point for this, I think it's $33, isn't that bad for a Charlotte Tilbury product. So run and go get this. Number two spot. This might surprise some of you because it's a powder, but it is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Twist and Light Powder. And I have the shade two medium. I don't know if this released in the States yet because I got this before it released in the US. It had released in Europe. This is what it looks like. Very reminiscent of the Oma Beauty where you twist it. You can't twist it when it's this way, it won't work, but you twist it when it's down and then powder kind of comes into the center there and then you can mix it. I really like how clean it is. I've already talked about that, but I, I can't believe how much I liked this powder. I like how thin and lightweight it is. If you remember long, long time ago when I was, gosh, I wanna say even like 10 years ago, the Makeup Forever HD Skin Powder, I'll throw up a picture because I don't remember the name of it. It was like the number one powder of all powders. Every person had to have it, I had it. It was I think the first product I ever hit pan in. And here's the swatch of it, but you can't really see it. It's just the perfect shade. I'm getting, I'm getting distracted. Everyone went bananas over that powder. And that's what prompted me to pick this up, honestly. And I'm so glad I did. It's very, it's similar to that, just as far as how finely milled it is, how weightless it feels on the skin. But if you wore that powder, you know, it gave insane amount of flashback. It was one of those before everyone knew just the type of powders that had a flashback. You just, you'd see all these girls posting their photos on their MySpace or, you know, Facebook was just starting and they just, you could tell they used that powder. It was very apparent, but this is the bigger sister to that. It's just, it's everything better than that powder. I hope they come out with a pressed version of it because I'll be, I'll be all over that. The loose powder isn't as bad. Again, it's like, it's clean, so at least it doesn't get really messy, but I would prefer a pressed powder version of this and it would probably have been in my number one spot. I really like this powder. I think it's very underrated. I hope more people start talking about it because it just, it blurs, it sets, it doesn't mess up any foundation that I've worn underneath it. Similar to what I talked about with this concealer, I like this for a lot of the same reasons. So this powder is weightless, it's finely milled, you can't really see it on the skin, it sets your makeup without disrupting any of the foundation underneath, and I can wear it with any foundation and know that it's going to work. I don't have to remember what kind of foundation I can wear with this product, it just, it plays well with everything that I've tried. And again, like I, I don't wanna keep repeating myself, but I wake up in the morning and like I want to use this powder and that's what I want out of my products. Like I wanna be excited to put these on. That's how I wanna feel. Whereas, you know, like this hourglass one, it doesn't excite me in the morning. This does. And it's like, it's like, it's just a powder. Like I don't understand. I put it in number two because it just, it makes me so happy and it's just, it's just a powder. Like, I don't know how that happens, but I really recommend this. I think that if you try this, you won't be disappointed. It's a great staple powder. And if you thought I couldn't rave about products anymore, number one spot is going to go to the Beauty Blender Bounce Skin Tint. Always on Radiant Skin Tint. It looks like this and... I don't know what I can say about this skin tint to really just project how I'm feeling about it. Here's a swatch here. I have the shade Light 4. So everything about this foundation, if I could create the perfect foundation, this is what it would be. I, I'm just gonna get this out of the way real fast before we talk about all the cons. I just don't like this dropper. I wish that it had more of like a squeeze tube or just, you know, you could pour it or a pump anything other than this dropper. I'd rather it just not even have a dropper and just pour it out like this, quite honestly. But that's the only bad thing I have to say about it. Other than that, the exact foundation that I would create if I could create one. It's that perfect, just light coverage where it's, it's a little bit heavier than light. It's not sheer, it's light coverage. It wears perfectly throughout the day. And the wear down 
is perfect. It almost just wears down and looks like you're just not wearing makeup. I can't even explain how it looks. You can watch my review and just even see after eight to 10 hours how it looked on my skin. You couldn't even tell that it had worn down. That's just how naturally it wore down on your skin. And that's what I love the most about this. It was extremely weightless on the skin without being overly luminous. It was like a dewy natural finish, which is the perfect finish for me. And I can't say enough about this. I picked it up because I saw it on Tara Lynn's channel. I'm so glad that I did. I don't know why more people aren't talking about this. It's the perfect skin tint. Well, it's right on the edge of what I would consider a skin tint and a foundation because of the coverage. To me, a skin tint is a little bit more sheer. So maybe that's why people didn't pick this up is because they didn't want a skin tint. I highly recommend this. Plus the price point. I want to say this is $29. It is not that expensive compared to just other foundations on the market in Sephora. This is highly affordable. If you like the Tarte Rainforest of the Sea water foundation that's been discontinued, you'll love this. It's very reminiscent of that. I had that foundation in Shop My Stash. It was very very eerie, but it immediately I was like, oh, this kind of just wears just like that. And it's been discontinued. This is a pretty much exact dupe for it. However, it just wears a thousand times better than that foundation. I am excited to wear this all year long. This is probably, it's a little early to say, but it's probably my favorite product of 2022. That's how much I love this. Immediately when I tried it, I was blown away. It continued to wear well. And every time I've worn it after, I have just loved and fallen more in love with this foundation. And that's gonna wrap up this video. That is ranking all the products that I've tried in the past month or so. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye everyone.